I am Jeffrey Rickman, and I'm the pastor at First United Methodist Church in Elwada and the Methodist Church in Delaware, and I have a lovely daughter named Susanna Grace Rickman who turns four years old today. If you're wanting to wave at people, you can wave right there, Susanna, at that camera right there. And uh, Susanna's been working really hard on learning this New City Catechism, um, which is uh, from the Gospel Coalition. And uh, we've been working on it for over a year, and she has a lot left to learn. This is the first level of, of memorization, 52 questions and answers. Uh, she'll be a little rough on some of them, but really she's amazing for four years old. So um, what do you say we just dive into it, huh, Susanna? Yeah. Okay, remember to speak loud and clear. Yes. What is our only hope in life and death? That we are not our own, but belong to God. Remember to look at me. Or you can look at uh, one of those two cameras over there. Okay. What is God? God is the creator of everyone and everything. All right. How many persons are there in God? There are three persons in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Why don't you tell me? Look at me. How and why did God create us? God created us, male and female. Louder. God created us. A God created us, male and female, in His own image to glorify Him. It's in water. Here, let's just let's go through this the whole way. All right. Question five: What else did God create? God created all humans to eat, pray, drink. No, no, no! You 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 got tripped up, girl. Uh, we just did. How and why did God create us? Uh, God created us male and female in his own image to glorify him, right? What else did God create? God created all things and how his creation was very good. Good. How can we glorify God? By loving, by loving him and by obeying his commands and law. Good. Question seven. What does the law of God require? That we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That we love our neighbor as ourselves. Good. What is the law of God stated in the Ten Commandments? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not have no other gods before me. You shall not misuse. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. Good job, Susanna. What does God require in the first, second, and third commandments? First. First, that we know God as the only true God. Good. Second, that we avoid idolatry. Third, that, that we treat God's name as with fear and reverence. Very good. What does God require in the fourth and fifth commandments? Fourth. That, that on the that on the Sabbath day we spend time in worship with God. Good. Fifth. Fifth. That we love. That we love and honor our father and mother. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, what does God require in the sixth, seventh, and eighth commandments? Sixth. Sixth. That we do not hurt. That we do not hurt. Or deceive. Or hate. Or hate our neighbor. Seventh. Seventh. That we live. Purely and faithfully live. Faithfully, yeah. Uh, faithfully. Eighth. Eighth. That we do not take. That we do not take without permission, which belongs. That which. That which belongs to someone else. Good. Now, what does God require in the ninth and tenth commandments? Ninth. That we do not lie. Lie or deceive. Good. And tenth. Tenth. That we. That we are content, not envying anyone. Good, good. Can anyone keep the law of God perfectly? No, 
now since the fall, no human has been able to keep the law of God perfectly. Good. Did God create us unable to keep his law? Yeah, we'll get one in a second. We're going to finish this section and then you can have some water. Okay. Did God create us unable to keep his law? No, but because of the disobedience of so Adam and Eve, we are all born in sin and guilt, unable to keep God's law. Good. Since no one can keep the law, what is its purpose? Since no one can keep the law, what is its purpose? What is its purpose? Since no one can keep the law. That we... Uh, that we may know the holy nature of God and the sinful nature of our hearts, and that's our need of a Savior. Very good. Now, Susanna, what is sin? Sin is rejecting or ignoring God in the world he created, not being or doing what he requires in his law. What is idolatry? Idolatry is trusting in creating rather than the creator. Good. Will God allow our disobedience and idolatry to go unpunished? No. Only those... No, God is... Uh, no. God is righteously angry with our sin and will punish them both in this life and in the life to come. Is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? Yes. God reconciles us to himself by our Redeemer. Who is the Redeemer? The only true Redeemer. The only Redeemer is the Lord Jesus Christ. Very good. Okay, so we're about to do the next section. You can go ahead and have a drink of water. Okay. Now, you'll notice when my daughter is doing this, sometimes, well, she's broken into song one time, it's because this catechism is uh, modeled on, I think Timothy Keller's wife actually came up with songs for every single one of these, and so Susanna knows a lot of songs as well that uh, uh -huh. help her remember these things. All right, Susanna, are you ready to do the second part now? Uh -huh. Very good. Okay, question 21. What sort of redeemer is needed to bring us back to God? One who is truly human and also truly God. Why must the redeemer be truly human, Susanna? God on her. The human one. Why must the redeemer be truly human? That in human nature he might on our behalf perfectly obey the whole law and suffer the punishment for human sin. Good job, Susanna. Why must the Redeemer be truly God? That, um, because of his, because of his divine nature, his obedience and suffering will be perfect and effective. Good. Question 24. Why was it necessary for Christ the Redeemer to die? Was it necessary for Christ the Redeemer to die? Christ died willingly in our place to deliver us from the power and penalty of sin and to bring us back to God. Good. Question 25. Does Christ's death mean all our sins can be forgiven? No. All our sins can't be forgiven? Yes. Yes. Because Christ's death on the cross, a cross fully paid the penalty for our sin, he will remember our sins no more. Who will remember our sins no more? God. Right. Okay, good. What else does Christ's death redeem? Every part of fallen creation. Good. Are all people just as they were lost through Adam saved through Christ? No. Only those who are elected by God and united by faith in Christ. United to? to faith by Christ. United to Christ. Christ by faith. Yeah, there it is. What happens after death to those not united to Christ by faith? They will be cast out from the presence of God. Stop. Looking at me. Tell me. What happens after death to those not united to Christ by faith? They will be cast out from the presence of God and do hell to be justly punished forever. Okay. How can we be saved? Only by faith in Jesus Christ. And? And then it's substitution, they are atoning death on the cross. Good. What is faith in Jesus Christ? It's receiving and resting on him alone for salvation as he is offered to us in the gospel. Good. What do we believe by true faith? We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The, fir- the third day he rose again for the- from the dead. And he ascended into hell to be justly like He Peter. ascended into he ascended into heaven on the third day. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and will come to, and, and from there. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. High five. What do justification and sanctification mean, Susanna? Just Justif- looking at me. Justification means our declare righteousness before God. Sanctification means our gradual growing righteousness. Very good. Should those who have faith in Christ seek their salvation through their own works or anywhere else? No. Rest. Yeah, for some reason, this is an easier one, too. No, because everything... No, because everything to salvation... Everything necessary. Everything necessary to salvation is found in Christ. There it is. Since we are redeemed by grace alone through Christ alone, must we still do good works and obey God's word? Um... Do we still need to do good works and obey the Bible? Yes, so that our lives may show love and gratitude to God, and so that by our godly behavior, others may be one to Christ. Very good job, Susanna. All right, last uh, question on the second section. Since we are redeemed by grace alone, through faith alone, where does this faith come from? The Holy Spirit. From the Holy Spirit. Okay, do you want to get a little bit more water? Yeah, go ahead. Now, a lot of people think that the practice of catechism is kind of weird because it's just question and answer and it's rote memorization. But Susanna and I have sat down and walked through this, um, I don't know, 100 times, 200 times, 300 maybe. Um, And as we're memorizing these things, she asks questions because that's what children do. So you notice there were a couple questions in this section where she didn't immediately remember the answer. So I just broke it down for her in my own words. So the fact that she got the answer then says that she understands a lot of this. Now, she can still understand a lot more, but she's doing pretty good for four. I'm very proud of you. Susanna, are you ready to do the third section? Yes. All right. Are you talking to me or are you talking to the computer screen? There it is. Oh, very good. Okay. What do we believe about the Holy Spirit? We believe. Um, that he is God, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Good. Okay. How does the Holy Spirit help us? The Holy Spirit can fix us of our sin, and he enables us to pray and to understand God's Bible. The Word. Yes. I was going to ask you, what is God's Word? It's the Bible. Okay, very good. What is prayer? Prayer is pouring out our hearts to God. With what attitude should we pray? The whole word of God directs us. No, no, no. With what attitude should we pray? With diligence. With love. With love, perseverance, and gratefulness. There it is. Okay. What should we pray? The whole word of God directs us in what we should pray. Good. What is the Lord's Prayer? Um, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it be the name of kingdom. On earth? Uh, on earth, how it is in heaven. Give us this our daily bread. And forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You did a good job covering up that burp. Okay. Yeah. How is the Word of God looking at me? 
How is the word of God to be read and heard? With diligence, preparation, and prayer, and so that we may accept it with faith and practice it in our lives. Good, good. What are the sacraments or ordinances? Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Good. What is baptism? Baptism is the washing with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Good. Is baptism with water the washing away of sin itself? No. Only the blood of Christ can cleanse us from sin. Good. What is the Lord's Supper? Christ fast. <laughs> Christ commanded. Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and drink from the cup and sing for remembrance of him. Okay, does the Lord's Supper add anything to Christ's atoning work? Does it add anything to what Jesus did on the cross? Remember that one? Christ. So you need to start by saying, no, it didn't add anything, right? So, no. No. Christ. Christ. Died. Died. Once for all. There it is. Okay. For some reason, some of the short ones are harder. You know this one. Tell me, what is the church? A community elected for eternal life and you now by faith to love, follow, learn from, and worship God. Together. Good. Where is Christ now? Christ is now. No, Christ rose. Christ rode, arose bodily from the grave the third day after his death and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Good. Okay. What does Christ's resurrection mean for us? Christ is now. Christ triumphed. Christ triumphed over sin and death so that all who trust in him will be raised to new life in this world, to everlasting life in the world to come. Good. Of what advantage to us is Christ's ascension? Uh, this one is pretty hard. No, it's not. You know it. Christ is now. Christ is now. Christ is now a... Uh, Christ is now a uh, came for us in the presence of his Father and also sends us his Spirit. Very good. Okay. Only one question left. What hope does everlasting life hold for us? That we will live with and enjoy God forever in the new heaven and the new earth where we will be forever free from all sin and a renew, restore creation. All right, Susanna, good work. Uh, just one second before you get water. I want you to look at my phone right there, right in between the two cameras, and say, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. On my birthday. On my birthday. Okay. You can get some water now, and I'm just going to talk to the camera for a second, and then we'll be done, okay? okay. Just be quiet and drink your water. So, Susanna, obviously, is a very intelligent young lady, but most children are able to do this, and I, as a pastor, have uh, been wanting to instruct children on this level for some time, and now i finally got one of my own children. Um, it's my hope and expectation to do this with my son, Jesse, and then I have another baby on the way, but also... Uh, there are children in the local church that require training like this. And for anyone who finds themselves watching this video, I want to encourage you to be an encourager of children in your church. Um, there are uh, children in this area that need to be discipled. They need to be discipled by their parents and their pastors. So uh, I would highly advocate getting this uh, catechism and having a daily practice of talking through it and memorizing it. Because this gives the theological concepts and vocabulary necessary to really talk through faith and uh, to be people of faith. Now, Susanna um, has an endowment fund already established in her name. And if you want to support her in her Christian walk, we're going to put some information on this video so that uh, you can send a monetary gift to her endowment, which is uh, for the betterment of whatever local church she belongs to in perpetuity. Um, Sarah Beth and I... 
established endowments in our names, and we've established one in Jesse's name, and he's going to be here in two years when he turns four doing the same thing. But uh, just want to uh, urge anyone who's been blessed by Susanna to show your appreciation to God through her. Um, and then even if you don't have money that you would like to, to put in her direction, just pray for her. Pray for children in the church. We need a new generation of people that are uh, clinging to God and, and faithfully following him in a scriptural way. So thank you for uh, supporting me and, and my daughter and my family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Take care.